Blog Talk Radio. Hello, and welcome to today's episode of 219 Green Connect, where we explore topics about the environment and green living in Northwest Indiana. For past show archives, news, and upcoming events, you can check out our website at 219greenconnect.com or join us on Facebook or Twitter. I am Kathy Simple. I'm your host, and with me today, I have urban homesteader Aja Yasir, and she is going to tell us about her her lovely garden uh, that produces lots of biodiversity on her regular-sized lot in Gary, Indiana. I had the good fortune to meet her last fall on a farm hop sponsored by Northwest Indiana Food Council, and her garden was among those featured precisely because she was doing such interesting things and it, it just it was my favorite, quite honestly, because of all the great things she was doing for her family in terms of food production and in terms of what she's doing for the earth because of her care that she was taking and just how artfully she designed her garden. So, Aja, thank you so much for being with us today. I just wish it was under better circumstances. Uh, welcome, <laughs> and can you tell people... I'd love for you to tell people a little bit about what's going on right now, obviously, and also some background on how and why you started your garden. Okay, so right now the city has decided to take me to court for my garden. The trial starts on April 22nd. And the main reason that they're taking me to court is because I use wood chips in my landscape. We don't do grass. We don't have a front lawn. We don't have a back lawn either. The front lawn, side yard, as well as the backyard have been converted into growing space for food production. And our area is zoned for both residential and agriculture, so the the case is really ridiculous to me. But we started the growing um, because I was dealing, well, first off, we're in an area that was a tiny house movement in the 1920s. So when we bought this house, we said, okay, how can we make this, sustainable in 2019. Now, a tiny house from the 1920s is very, very different from a modern tiny house movement. It's still a large house, and if you drove past this neighborhood, you would not know that this was a tiny house movement in the 1920s. But the reason that this is that they um, erected this tiny house movement over here is because it was kind of as uh, hmm, as a revolt, for lack of a better term, against the Victorian, large Victorian homes that were before these houses that were built. But anyway, we, we looked at this house, we bought this house in 2016, and we said, okay, how can we make it sustainable for 2016 and beyond? And we started with food. We're going to put solar panels and all of that, but we wanted to start with food. I'm a gardener. I grew up gardening. I grew up in Chicago with a family who had a garden, and my grandparents had a farm in Mississippi, so I wanted to continue on with that tradition. The wood chips, we, we do um, what is called back to Eden, the back to Eden method. That's what has been termed. We use wood chips. We don't till our soil at all. It's all organic. We don't use pesticides or fungicides or herbicides. We actually layer um, the amendments on our soil. So we use wood chips, seaweed that's readily available. We use um, leaves and any other organic material that is readily available um, in our area. And the and another reason I started is because I was going through, we, we lost our daughter in 2016. She was three weeks old, and it was, I mean, it's, it's still a heavy burden to bear, but the gardening became my refuge. It became meditation for me, and I just, it's, it's something that I was just drawn to, so I just had to do it for my own healing. And physically, I was experiencing a lot of distress. I was experiencing a lot of inflammation. I had digestive digestion issues, and I knew that probiotics 
they come from the soil. The best probiotics come from the soil. So I knew I had to get back to the soil in order to heal physically as well as mentally. That's that's really beautiful. And while I am a soil junkie and everything that you're saying to me makes perfect sense, and I, I love that term, back to Eden, you know, um, it might not sound beautiful, I mean, because you haven't really mentioned the plants. You're talking about the soil. Oh. I saw the garden probably toward the shoulder season, maybe toward the end, but things were beautiful. You just had so many plants that I had never seen in any garden in the area before, or frankly, probably anywhere. But it was absolutely gorgeous. So, I mean, beyond the wood chips, you you just have some, frankly, I mean, a beautifully designed yard, a yard I envy. I, I think I said that very openly. <laughs> so, yeah, could you talk a little bit about, you know, your ideas for that too? Because it, it doesn't look like a traditional food-producing lawn. Right. Of course, we grow um, roughly, <clears throat> excuse me, we grow roughly 200 varieties of medicinal herbs, mushrooms, vegetables, fruit. We have fruit trees in the back that I put back there. Um, We have all types of things. We have native plants as well as plants that grow well in our area. And I also have tropical plants in, um, in containers. So we do citrus, we have orange trees, we have avocado trees, we have St. John's wort in the ground. It's all, if I went through everything we have, it would probably take up the whole show. But <laughs> we try to make sure the, the goal is to grow as much food as we possibly can in our growing space. We don't eat meat, so that's a great thing So we, because we can't have livestock over here. Because in the city of Gary, in order to have chickens, you have to be 200 feet from your neighbors. So we're really close to our neighbors. But we wanted to make sure we can grow as much food and different food that you can't find in the grocery stores. Instead of red tomatoes, we grow black tomatoes and blue tomatoes, and we do purple artichokes. And I'm always adding new things to our landscape it's really it's it's a way for us to explore taste as well. I like to travel, so it's almost like traveling over the world when I can go out here and just explore different tastes, things that I've never tasted and things that you can't even find in high end grocery stores that are just just different things so that was an that's another thing that we do. We just grow a lot of different things. Right. Well, I I love that. I mean, I am a permaculture student myself, and I also currently happen to be in the Indiana Master Watershed uh, Steward Program. And it was just so ironic that the day, I think, uh, before you, you called me and told me about this that was going on, we had just covered some very relevant topics to this in in our lesson and just about how it is so advantageous to keep water on premises instead of letting it all, you know, go back into the storm drains. And one of the key ways to do that is not to have a lawn. I mean, lawns are not very porous. Um, You know, a lot of the yards around here have clay where water just tends to either pool on top or, you know, run off. And you're doing all the right things to, to really build soil you know, to to help the water table, I mean, just everything. So that has got to be very, very frustrating for you. And I think also very ironic that your court date happens to be, tell tell everybody when that is. (laughs) The court date happens to be on Earth Day. And it's also ironic because the Department of Environmental Affairs gave us this citation. So there's a lot of irony mixed in that because they're saying that our wood chips attract fungi as well as bugs, which are two things that are very necessary in order to build um, soil. Our soil over here is sand. And in order to have the food or the, the crops really hold on to nutrition, you have to build soil on top of that sand. Because sand, although it can be nutrient-dense, that does not mean that the plants can hold on to it because water goes straight through sand. Oh, yes, our, um, our court date 
our trial actually <laughs> begins April 22nd, Earth Day, 2019. Wow. And your your other child asked you, Mom, how are we going to celebrate Earth Day if we're in court? And I, I loved what you said. Yes, I told her we're going to celebrate Earth Day by fighting for the Earth. She is the little environmentalist of the house. <laughs> she has, we can't use plastic, we can't do certain, we just, she has really changed the things that we do at our house. And it wasn't, we didn't motivate her to do this. This is just something that came from her. Maybe just, we do homeschool, so maybe she's read a few things about the environment and the shows that she's allowed to watch are science-based. So she has said, okay, we can't use plastic. We have to care for the earth. And to her, Earth Day is like a national holiday. So she was concerned that we weren't going to be able to celebrate it. But I told her we are celebrating it by going to trial and we're going to fight for the earth and our growing practices. Well, I have been the um, MC actually at Earth Day for the last two years. And it's ironic that this year, uh, the one that's typically held regionally at the Porter County Expo Center is not happening because the Expo Center is under construction. So I think a lot of people are looking for a home on that day in a meaningful way that they can plug in. And if I understand correctly, you've had some people say that they would like to show up, support you, and can you give people some ideas of, of what's going on that day and how they can show their support? Yes, the Gary Food Council has come together and decided to organize a march. We've gotten a lot of support. Kathy, you have been, I, I really appreciate, we, my whole family really appreciates what you've been doing with the petition and everything that you've done to help out. The Gary Food Council has also stepped in, and they said that we are going to do a seed swap at our house at 10 a.m. on Earth Day. And then we're going to do a, a mini tour of the property. Again, like you said, Kathy, this is a regular residential size lot, so the tour won't be that long. And then we're going to walk over to the courthouse, which is at 555 Polk in Gary, Indiana. And it's going to be a march. It's an Earth Day march to celebrate Earth Day as well as to show support for what we're doing here. At our um at our growing space. Great. I don't and know. Just do you want to, to say the address on air? Well, I was wondering about that, but you know what? Here, how about this? Why don't we invite people to sign the petition? And anybody who signs the petition, we could message them, you know, close to the date to give the address. Okay. You know, just so we okay. don't have your address all over the place. Does that sound fair? That's perfect. Yeah. I mean, I want I want to be respectful of, you know, your privacy. I know, you know, it's, well, maybe while <laughs> I, I'm going to cue this up and give everybody the, um, the shortened link that we came up with. It's bit.ly, that's be like boy, it like Tom dot L-Y forward slash chips, not lawns. So reference to wood chips there, chips, not lawns, and kind of a food, not lawns reference as well. We'll put that in the show notes and, um, Hopefully, we're going to make this hashtag popular too. I don't. I know you did not end, or you did not enter this thing expecting to be, you know, food advocate or food rights advocate. You were just doing what you're doing for the reasons you already described: healing yourself, feeding your family, grieving your daughter. But you have earned a, a new title, and now even have a T-shirt to prove it. Do you want to tell people a little bit about that? Oh, of course. Um, I created this T-shirt. I was thinking, you know, because I, I love I love hip hop. So um, Biggie Smalls had, a, you know, a logo that said the Notorious B.I.G. And so I was sitting in the house and I was talking to my husband and I said, you know, I'm the I'm the Notorious F.I.G. And it was fig because we grow figs at our um, at our landscape as well, Chicago figs because they grow well in our area. And then he said, what does that even mean, F-I-G? And so he came up with um, the saying, Farmer and Gary. So we have T-shirts that say the notorious F-I-G, and then at the bottom it says Farmer and Gary. And we're selling those T-shirts to 
um, you know, to just bring awareness to what's going on and to bring awareness to Earth Day and to bring awareness to other farmers in the city of Gary because this city has the possibility of being the agricultural hub of Northwest Indiana. It has that possibility. And so we're selling these T-shirts and all 100% of the profits leading up to our trial go to the Douglas Center, which is a great center that we take our daughter to, and there are a few homeschool groups that go there. It's in Miller, the Miller area of Gary, and it's an Indiana State Park. And the Douglas Center is geared toward children and nature and teaching children about birds and soil and different aspects of nature. So we thought this is, this would be a good um, way to raise funds for them. Well, that's great. I love that you're not asking for help directly, but you're you're addressing the root issue, which is seems like if more people were properly educated about what it truly takes to restore soil health, they would learn these very things and know that you're doing exactly the right stuff. I mean, you've you've gotten a lot of support on this petition from people who are farmers, gardeners, scientists, um, and really coming from all over the place. Uh, so I know it's in my heart that you win this. And quite frankly, you know, for you personally and what it would mean to you, but also for the rights of people who haven't caught on to this yet. I mean, it was really my hope after seeing yours that I could, um, you know, maybe start a food revolution on my own street in my own neighborhood. And I know that people start to get cold feet, you know, if somebody else is, is being shut down, you know, it's, it might be that much more likely that other people don't get it started. And so you've been a brave pioneer and really a way shower for many of us. And so I, I really want yours to continue so you can continue educating um, you know, and being that model for all of us. That, that's really my hope. And can I also say that we're going to be, I'm going to be seeing you and hopefully getting a T-shirt or at least paying you for my T-shirt, <laughs> my notorious no, you get a T-shirt. T-shirt. You get yeah, a T-shirt. Yeah, cool. You already have your Can't shirt wait. printed. Awesome. Can't wait. I'll be wearing it proudly. I'll wear it today. As a matter of fact, we'll get a photo op. But we are going to be going to um, a Northwest Indiana permaculture meetup. And I just said, they've been dying to meet you. I've been telling them about you. And I just think, you know, if we can get more people that basically know about permaculture, whether they, they go to an environmental education center like the Douglas Center or not, this is just a group of citizens that get together periodically to do things like seed swaps, to educate one another on soil health, sharing what they know, and sustainable, you know, gardening and farming methods. So I really think that they're going to be your people, and they're going to be happy as well. So, yeah, well, I mean, this is I, a, lot, I, a lot riding on the region's environmental health. No pressure. <laughs> right, right. And, you know, Gary is a special place. I'm not from Gary, but especially this area that we're in is so close to the steel mill, um, we come outside at nighttime, and it's, you can smell the chemicals in the air. And also the whole city, well, I think the whole city is has been designated a food desert. But the area is all, this area in particular is also zoned for agriculture. So I have concerns around that because if, people in the area are taught to grow their own and the area is already zoned for agriculture, maybe we can get out of that category of food desert because you can't have a food desert if people are walking outside and going to their yards and picking tomatoes or whatever they want to grow. So I think there's a huge opportunity here for Gary um, to get beyond the, the blight and the poverty and the stigma and really get to self-sufficiency and grow as a, as a major city in, in the Midwest. This used to be a beacon, and now it's just 
is is known for blight and it's known for crime and it's known for all of these negative things. There are a lot of good things going on in Gary, but the stigma that's attached to Gary can be erased if we start with agriculture, if we start where we are and we start with self-sufficiency and we teach people that they can do something for themselves. I love that. I mean, there's really nothing more empowering, like you said, than being able to go right outside and pick food. And I'm a big one about preserving food as well. I mean, it's just a great step to connect people to the land and, like you said, just start a path to self-sufficiency. That's certainly, you know, another reason that I do it along with you. Just it's so restorative and it's it's a, it makes your landscape beautiful. I mean, there's really no downside, and that's what just kills me that you're being challenged to to keep this beautiful garden. Do you know like what what does the citation? Um, I don't want to pry too much beyond what you are able to share, but what is the threat if 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 this is not successful? I mean, are they saying that you would not be able to continue with this garden? Well. I'm not sure what, well, the end thing would be we wouldn't be able to continue. The citation is saying that our wood chips are debris. But I'm not sure what leg they're saying, they're standing on with that. So I, I don't really mm-hmm. know, I don't know what angle they're going to come with um, during the trial. But they're saying that our wood chips are debris. Yeah, that makes no sense to me. I mean, wood chips can be found in plenty of, you know, commercially landscaped, professionally landscaped, you know, installments. So I I think wood chips are a very common landscape site that are not ever referred to that I've heard of as debris. So that is bizarre. <laughs> have you been well, able to get any additional information from from uh, the city, or have they given you anything else besides just the, the citation? Um, I'm sorry, you, you asked me, are they giving me what help for? What did you say? Honey? Have they given you any other information or conversation or just any background beyond here's the citation? Well, no, not really. Um they, I, I really did try to work with the Department of Environmental Affairs to find out what, I didn't even know what the issue was. The, the citation just says debris. So I went to the law office, and they said, oh, well, this is the issue with the wood chips. So, okay, <laughs> now I know that the wood chips are being labeled debris. It's not that we have garbage around our house because we don't. So they, I was told that the wood chips are being labeled debris. I actually spoke with our mayor last, or two weeks ago at the city council meeting, and I explained to her what was going on, and she was shocked by it. And she told the head of the Department of Environmental Affairs to handle it. She said, handle it, and if it's not handled, come to my office. It wasn't handled. I tried to get it handled. And so I went to her office, and I ended up having to write an email to um, to her assistant to try to – I was really trying to rectify the situation before having to even go to court. But then when I went to Great. court and they took it to trial, all conversations stopped. As a matter of fact, I received an email from the person who wrote the citation – at the Department of Environmental Affairs, and he told me that, well, he responded to the email after court. I sent the email on Friday. He responded to the email after court on Monday at around 2.30, and he said he can't have conversations about it now because it's gone to trial. I've even reached out because the city has received grants for urban agriculture, which is very, <laughs> that's another irony. The city has received USDA grants for for agriculture. So I reached out to Purdue, which is over the grant. I reached out to the Connect here, and he was basically saying he couldn't do anything um, and that I should reach out to DePage County, which is in Illinois, 
So I, I mean, no, I haven't received any any information outside of the mm-hmm. citation. Well, it just sounds like, I mean, you've, you've really tried to do everything right within your yard. You've really tried to take it to the proper channels. And I don't start petitions lightly, but it just seems like when, you know, you hear about something that just makes no sense and you've, you've tried those other channels, this is why we're, we're starting this petition. So if you're on change.org, we, we gave you the short link already, which is bit.ly forward slash chips not lawns. And if you just want to search for it, the, the heading for it is Welcome Wood Chips Instead of Lawn. There's a beautiful photo there, actually a couple different photos that you can see of Aja's uh, yard and garden. And we're going to be posting updates there um, as we hit certain milestones. I'd really hope to be at 500 before we had this uh, podcast interview, and we hit 500 last night. So just looking at the current total is 524. I'd really love for you to have thousands of signatures by the time you go to court and, you know, have a good number of those people come and join the march, join the seed swap, and be there for you at the court date. What I'd really love is for, you know, the powers to be to just wake up and make you, you know, not have to go to court. I mean, that would be a better solution. But we're, we're only doing this because you have already tried having conversation and that just hasn't worked. So I just want to thank you for your efforts. Again, I know you didn't necessarily want to be a food activist, <laughs> but right. um, I'm, I'm really glad that you've awakened, um, you know, just a passion and a sense of urgency among people that see that this right could be taken away. And I think, you know, there are a lot of other people passionate about their right to grow food that do not want to, you know, go down easily. So we are there for you. We support you. I actually benefited from going to that urban agriculture program that you just mentioned. I I came up to Gary and learned quite a lot, and it it was a wonderful program. So everything that you're saying I know to be true. Um, Again, we'd love signatures. If you have stories, if you have background, if you have scientific credentials that help this case, I guess, you know, anything that you can add would be great. If you have connections to the media, uh, the traditional media that might want to cover this, you know, I'm just trying to think outside the box for any additional help that we can get to promote this effort. But, you know, we want to really take care of this very special, notorious FIG. (laughs) I just love that. I love your heart, and I love that you're keeping, you know, kind of a community community focus too, educating others instead of a woe is me attitude. So you're you're really a special person. You're a treasure to this community. Um, you, your yard, everything about you. So thank you for being you. And you're not alone. You're not alone in this. So we're almost at the end of our time. Is there anything else you'd like to share? I do want to point out, because people are online, they can't really see the garden, and I know you're posting these beautiful pictures, but I do want to point out that we incorporate edible flowers in the landscape because we do understand that the the garden starts in the front yard. So we've incorporated a lot of edible flowers, things that people don't even know are edible, like coxcomb is edible, Blue balloon flowers are edible, just all of these edible flowers so we can kind of fit into the residential area with flowers. And I don't even think many people over here even have flowers. So yeah. I do want to point it's that gorgeous. out. Even even your lettuce, your Merlot lettuce, I was just so taken by that. It's just such a beautiful shock of color. But, yes, we will be adding some of those photos. We really encourage people to go to the the website, 219greenconnect.com, and we're going to have this as a cover story once the podcast is live and ready to be listened to. So I know we're almost at the end of the time. I want to thank our guest, Aja Yasir, and remember to sign the petition if you're available April 22nd and can come out to Gary to be a part of uh, the activities going on to support her efforts. We'd love to have you there. And thank you. This has been another episode of 219 Green Connect. I'm your host, Kathy Sippel, and that is all for today.